Um, I created a few slides basically about the day. Um, what we talked about, um, what are our findings. So stay on stage for a few more minutes and maybe um, if you have any other questions for the, for the other panelists of the day, this is your, your moment when you can still ask them. So I'm, I'm going to give a, a little summary on my takeaways of the, of the day. Um, and I would like to hear yours as well. Maybe here in a question, maybe in a comment, um, or in our survey. We will we'll send them out probably next week or so. Just an, an, a little questionnaire about what you thought about this day. Um, so first, I think we came to the conclusions that quantum computers will be able to break the current public key encryption. And um, the, the inventory, uh, the, the, the management, knowing your, your cryptographic assets and your strategy, that, that is, that is a, a, a key element going forward. Uh, the long-term data needs to be protected, as, as Sebastian also gave the example with, 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 with signing. Um, but if, if we're not able to mitigate the post-quantum threat, then our data might be at risk. And that risk that could be created today, because that long-term validity, if you have your data, as, as we've heard during the talks today, that might be needed and be securely available for a long term. So if you need to protect something for 30 years, well, then you're too late. Yeah? So we need to start thinking about that now and thinking about our strategy, what we are going to do with the data we already have and how we preserve the data over a longer period of time. And this crypto migration, and I think that was a statement that I heard from Mike, this crypto migration will be the hardest we've ever done. And I think that is absolutely so true. Uh, so now is the time to plan, to prepare, and to budget for an active, to effective transition yeah? uh, to resistant algorithms. Um, and Again, the planning, the inventory, knowing what data you have, uh, um, that is what is needed if you want to migrate it. And so that is something you can actually start doing today. So I think Melanie and, and Jonathan stated, uh, um, start not deploying your post-quantum cryptography in production today. Uh, we're not ready for that yet. Yeah? Um, but maybe you can start testing with it. And by creating your inventory and making sure that you also have your agility, uh, where we just ended the, the, the panel with, uh, so that you know, uh, uh, again, what crypto assets you have, when you use them, and where you use them, uh, that you're not encoding your, your algorithms hard-coded in your software or in your firmwares. Um, as a few questions from, from the audience. Uh, regulatory compliance. I think that is going to be a big item going forward. Uh, um, some parts of the world might have completely different requirements than other parts of the world. And we might see a shift in, in the acceptance and adoption of certain algorithms. And what would that mean for interoperability between systems? Um, what does it mean if your signature and keys suddenly become multiple times the size they've ever been. And you have a database that has hard-coded field lengths. Yeah? Uh, that might, might not work. You might need to adjust your database. But okay, adjusting that field length might not be the problem. But then your storage is also maybe doubled or quadrupled or, or who knows how, of, how, how much more data you need. And that similar counts for, for, for memory usage, for bandwidth, for CPU usage. It will have impact on everything you do and all the systems that you're using in your digital life. Um, this may, might make your system slower and it might require that you update your system to new software versions. And is the software that you're actually using today still supported? 
Will it provide new updates? Or do you need to migrate to a different platform? So keep updating. And maybe think about implementing certificate lifecycle management and key management systems so that when we need to migrate to new algorithms, that you at least have the agility to do this quickly. So my question to you here in the room and remote is, shall we do this again? I think this was a great day of discussions, of information sharing and networking. And I think we should do this again. And for example, one thing that I heard here in the last minute is what would be the impact on hardware? Well, I would like to have speakers maybe an entire track about hardware. What does this mean for hardware security modules? What does this mean for our IoT devices? What does this mean for, for smart cards and, 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 and other infrastructure that we use from the consumer side, but also the uh, industrial, industrial IoT systems? And I've already um, had an, an interesting speaker that I actually wanted to invite today, but was unable to attend. Um, and I'm sure he would like to join us at a next event. So that's why we have decided to come up with a follow-up in Europe uh, after the summer of 2023, so this summer. Um, the exact date has to be confirmed, but probably the event needs to be longer maybe two days, maybe three, maybe an entire day. We have to decide. Um, and we will divide it in multiple tracks. So special, a, a track dedicated to government, hardware, but also, again, really on the migration part. What does this mean? How can you migrate your, your PTI? And we can step into more details and more discussions. But to do that, we also need your help. And that's why we raised the call for presentations because we have a lot of expertise here in the room, but also remote on the stream, yeah? And with all that expertise together, we can make an event like this even better. Today, we have learned a lot of things, not only about post-quantum, but also how we run this event as a consortium and what we would do better the next time. So go to, scan this QR code or go to pkic.org slash call and if you have an interesting talk that you would like to present or you know people that you say, okay, I would like to hear that presentation or that person speaking, let them know about it. Um, again, this event would not have been possible without our sponsors. Yeah? So if you would want an event like this, maybe you should consider sponsoring. And it doesn't have to be a big contribution. Even small contributions are really welcome. But things like this do not come for free. Yeah? And we all learn from this, and some organizations have this easily available, but for others it's much more complicated. So if we all work together, we can make the industry a little better. So with that, I would like to conclude the day and thank you for everyone who was here present in person and everyone who was following us at the stream. Um, I'm very uh, happy and glad that we did this. I think it was a very successful event, and I hope to see you again at our next event with the, the date to be announced, but somewhere after the summer. Thank you. And then to the last item, I said, are there any further questions? I haven't seen anyone at the mic here. So are we all so satisfied? Or do we want to get out and get some drinks and do some networking? <laughs> well, maybe we should do the last thing. So uh, we have some drinks outside in the, in the lobby and uh, would like to, uh, to talk to you all there. Thank you.